Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, we are delighted. It's Bright Side Global Trade TV. I'm Elton Brewington, and this is Claire Mesquita Brewington. And we are, have the pleasure to have Mr. Michael Gibbs on the call with us on this uh, Zoom call. Uh, let me say one thing before we do this again. At every recording, I'm trying to do this. Ho, ho, ho! Happy holidays! <laughs> Want to make sure that you get the benefit to know that we're wishing you a really great holiday season and we're expecting the best and, you know, and each one of our recordings, you imagine what that's like. And, and, <laughs> and, and also, thank you so much. And, and also, you know, happy, if you're watching say, happy this, holidays to you as well. Okay. Happy holidays. Right. But if you're watching this in 2022, because these videos will be available then, right. happy new year. Right, 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 and right. so we hope you have a great okay. new year. So, so we, go ahead, Michael. We have the good pleasure of introducing Mr. Mike, Michael Gibbs, and he is the author of various books. And one of the keynotes that he's offering opportunities for free certification courses. I just heard that. I said, I blew me away. And amongst a whole host of di different episodes, benefits and support, phenomenon. So we're happy to have you, Michael. Please share with us, introduce yourself. And I'm so happy to be here as well. Thank you so much. Uh, really nice to speak to your audience. I'll tell you a little bit about me and how we got into this. I'm not your traditional technology professional. I'm going to say that right now. I used to practice internal medicine. And around 20 some years ago, I was a nurse practitioner seeing patients in my office. And I realized how much I love tech. I mean, I really love tech. It was everything. It was my passion. It was my hobby. It was my life, even though I was practicing medicine. Mm -hmm. And then about 20 some years ago, I transitioned into tech mm -hmm. and it was not so easy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I did what everybody thought, just get certified, you'll get hired. Mm -hmm. There was so much more that went into it than that. Mm -hmm. And I've spent the last 20 years helping people transition careers. Mm -hmm. Either they are going from healthcare or customer service or anything to tech or people were technology professionals, maybe they were software developers that wanted to do something else. So I've spent my life in one of two places, either working for WorldCom, Comcast, Cisco as a lead architect and shaping an industry, or I've been teaching people and coaching others, both people at Cisco, at other, other organizations, but a large number of people to get their first tech jobs. And that's kind of my favorite thing in the world is helping people get their first tech jobs. Wow. Oh, wow. Why that? I mean, technology is changing so much. It's changing every day, our use, application, and nobody ever knew that the cell phone was going to just explode the way that it did and how it's in every software program interacts with that. And, and so what, what is your prediction of where the, the, the industry of technology and, and networking is going? Yeah, and you know, it's, a, it's interesting you bring that up. So every day when I look at the trends and I look at every new advancement, it's a re-engineering of the same thing. Mm -hmm. So right now, what's trendy is cloud computing. Now, mm -hmm. in 1997, I was doing cloud computing. It was called Frame Relay. Mm -hmm. And then in 1999, we had another type of cloud, which was used for networking, called ATM. Mm -hmm. And then in 2000, we had one called uh, BGP2547 VPN. And then in 2001, it was VPLS. Mm -hmm. So as we see with all these new technology advancements, they're really just rehashing of the same thing. Okay. Okay. Now there have been some changes. The speed and performance is dramatic. Sure, so sure. when it started out, I was working with systems that had a 25 megahertz CPU, 25 million cycles per second. Mm -hmm. And now we're dealing with CPUs that have servers that have 128 CPUs or more. Mm. And each one of these things is in the gigahertz per second. So each one is thousands of times faster. Mm. And you have hundreds of them all in a single server. Mm -hmm. So that's enabled one server to be 50 servers and it enabled new services. So mm -hmm. what I see is more of the same, that network in the data center that's given businesses the opportunity to be much more competitive. Mm -hmm. It's just moving to somebody else's network in the data center mm -hmm. and that's called the cloud. Right. So whether it's Microsoft who basically rents their data center called Azure or mm -hmm. AWS who is renting their data center called AWS, which is Amazon, or Google who rents their data center called GCP, cloud computing is nothing more than somebody else's computer that you're renting. Right. Amazing. Right. That's the new transformation. So why is that exciting? Well, if I wanted a server from Dell, I call Dell on the phone, six weeks later, it shows up. Right. They build it, they customize it. Now, if I need a server with cloud computing, I click three buttons on my mouse and in less than 10 seconds, I have a server. Right. So we start looking at the agility to be able to go from six weeks to six seconds. Right, right. That speed yeah. is life-changing for businesses. Now, cloud computing and the reason the change is going this way 
Mm -hmm. Let's think about reality of the way we build technology systems. We build them for peak mm -hmm, mm -hmm, in a traditional mm -hmm. environment. So what is peak? Black Friday, okay. you know, Thanksgiving, that's the retailers, that's their busiest day of the year. So what do they Maximize build? Their store for? Black Friday. Right. And you know what happens the rest of the time? They're sitting around doing nothing. Right, right, so right. let's say it would normally cost me a million dollars to set up my website for the full year, but I need a $50 million website for Black Friday. Oh. Organizations right now are spending 50 million. Now, really? when they go to the cloud, they can build that 1 million website and they can just dynamically on demand during the Christmas holiday scale up. Okay. So the speed it enables companies to purchase what they want. Oh. But it's oh. so simple that the cloud is so simple that all the hard work that we did for all these years, the cloud provider does. So it enables businesses to dream up things and do them so much quicker. Sure. So what I think you're gonna see is the proliferation of faster networks, mm -hmm. 5G wireless, 6G, who knows? Okay. Going from 100 gigabit ethernet to 1000 gigabit ethernet to bigger and faster servers mm -hmm. to much more capacity. So I think the computers are gonna get much more personal. I think okay. we're gonna have access to much more information. Organizations are gonna take all this information coming from everywhere, mm -hmm. analyze it in real time, use artificial intelligence to make better business decisions. Mm -hmm. And to me, it feels like we're gonna use technology to become more efficient. And I've been working on this productivity thing forever. Mm -hmm. And that's what we architects do. We transform businesses through the use of innovative technologies. Okay. It's getting real exciting to me because the speed is really growing right now. Wow. One more item and then, uh, because we can go on with this for hours. <laughs> you know, now, yeah, what about automobiles, man? I mean, electric cars, you're going to start having to download everything on your, from your cell phone or connect to that, communicate with people from your cars or try. I see, I mean, it's going to be, I mean, you know, for, and, I was saying this to a, a friend of mine recently, and you know, as a matter of fact, he, he lives in Saudi Arabia, and he's saying that you know, adapting to networks in on such a scale is going to be phenomenal. The speed that we can can do this, just you just have the you have to have bandwidth, you have to have the personal bandwidth and the aspirational bandwidth. I mean, you know, you you've transmigrated. Tell us how you've done it. How, how, I, how I changed careers? Uh -huh. Well, I'll tell you what I first did and then what I did to fix it. And this okay. is the basis of how we do what we do. Uh -huh. I first thought certifications were the solution. So uh -huh. what did I do? I took this five day, $5,000 Microsoft Certified Systems Engineer Bootcamp. Then uh -huh. I locked myself in a room for four days, became a Cisco Certified Network Associate, read the 2000 pages. Uh -huh. Then I took a 10 day, $11,000 CCNP Bootcamp. Then I got a Cisco Certified Design Associate. Then I became a Cisco certified design professional. You know what happened? I applied for five jobs and I got, Mike, no degrees in tech, no background in tech. Because, you know, I have an MBA and I have a nerd <laughs> background. So, you know, they weren't impressed. Mm -hmm. What did I then do? I started calling tech recruiters. Mm -hmm. And I called 50 of them. And I mm -hmm. sent them all a nice gift. And I got a list of, tell me your wish list for the perfect employee. Oh, cool. And then I did a statistical analysis of the 50. Now, for the last 20 years, I've interviewed 5,000 people and I've interviewed about 10,000 hiring managers and said, what do you want in the perfect employee? Okay. And okay. I keep a running list and I build my training programs based upon that list. Okay. How do you innovate? You start with the end state and work back. How do you okay. transition careers? You look at the goal of the perfect employee. Uh -huh. Then you look at where the current employee is and you build a gap. You do a gap analysis and you build a plan. Whoa. So I found for me, what I needed was a better understanding of the technology, the business of the technology. Mm -hmm. I knew the tech, but I wasn't going to be transforming any organization if I only knew medicine. Right. So I had to develop some business acumen. Mm -hmm. I had to work on my emotional intelligence, which I had a little bit from medicine. Mm -hmm. I had a good amount of empathy from medicine. Uh, for whatever ridiculous reason, I've been a yoga instructor for my whole life. So <laughs> I've got a little bit of that kind of calmness that are there. I'm also been a martial it artist so my whole life. Yeah. So, you know, it's just one of those things. So I went in there and I remember the deciding factor. I've interviewed 5,000 people. And I'm going to tell you right now where the interviews all fail. Mm -hmm. some, for some reason, people think they need to know everything. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you interview someone. I've interviewed 5,000 people and 4,950 have lied to me on the interview. <laughs> I literally speaking have asked employees what do you want mm -hmm, right. and, and, I, and, and, and I just ask the question do you know it now the reality is employers want the following mm -hmm. they want someone that's technically competent someone mm -hmm. they can trust someone right. that's energetic someone See. that's enthusiastic someone that brings out the best in others someone that's willing to go above and beyond and someone that's a team player 
Mm -hmm. So, for example, I ask, I, I tell my students to say the following. Mm -hmm. If you're on an interview, and this is good for your audience, and you don't know, and yeah. we're talking with architects, I tell my people to say the following. I'm sorry I've not had the opportunity to learn the technology yet, but I want to be open, honest, and straightforward with you. Right. So but I'm good. highly energetic, right. I'm highly motivated, and I absolutely love technology. Okay. And if I was part of your team, I would do everything reasonable and unreasonable to learn it. Yeah. And I'm a great team player and I work really hard, but I need to be honest with you so you know my capabilities. By the right. way, I have a lot of competency in X, Y, and Z. Okay. And then wow. redirect them to what you know. Right. And that's why I've that's never been on an interview where I didn't get hired. Yeah, and right. that's why you know my students get hired so frequently because when mm -hmm. it comes to changing careers, be what they want. Now, you know, when I buy a yoga mat, it's the yoga mat that I want. When my wife that's buys right. her 400th pair of shoes, mm -hmm. she buys something that she wants. What do employers right. hire? what they want sure. so be what they want and that's you know that's the secret to what we do you know that's yeah. a very important point you know a very important in the in that realm you have a quick question Go ahead. uh tell us a little bit about these it certifications and these programs that you're offering uh and why people need to turn to it okay so i'm going to draw two distinctions between the program that i offer and the certification training i'm going to elaborate why Certification training is extremely valuable and everybody should do it if they wanna move into tech. Certification training shows some minimum level of competency. Certification training teaches you the name of a vendor service as well as how to configure them and set that up. Very valuable. So you wanna learn how to work with Cisco routers? You take a Cisco certification. It teaches you how to configure them and what they're called. Now, if you had a job that was related to building things, that would be completely appropriate. Yeah. So a cloud engineer, for example, that would go to the cloud, that would take solutions on the cloud, that would build these solutions on the cloud, that is perfect training for them. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Now, why I do what I do, which is different, I train cloud architects. Now, what is an architect? It is a person that is really a management consultant that's doing technology work. So when I worked as a management consultant, when I worked as a nurse practitioner, and when I worked as an architect, I have done the same job. Nothing has changed in my last 25 years. Mm -hmm. I start out by asking the customer to tell me either why they're sick or tell me about their business. You know, what's sure. going on with your business? What are your business goals? Mm -hmm. Then I say, tell me your business challenges. Then I ask them, tell me what their competitors are doing. Mm -hmm. I ask them what they're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. So that's where I start as an architect. Now, when I talked about certification, where it was the name of the service and how to configure that, that was great for that engineer that's gonna do that. Now, what did I do? I started with the customer and asked them about their business. Mm -hmm. Now, then I have to craft a solution, which means I need to study design, mm -hmm. which is not taught in that certification training. Mm -hmm. The certification training is configuration. Mm -hmm. I then need to design it. I need to document it. I need to present it to the customer and I need to sell it. Mm -hmm. Now, in many cases, my solutions are gonna be a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. And you don't sell a billion dollar solution by drawing a picture. Sure. You have to do an ROI model. You have to show the value of the solution greatly exceeds the cost borne by the customer, whether they're financing it for a data center where you're looking at their weighted average cost of capital or whether they're being in an operational expense environment on the cloud. We okay. still have to calculate the value that the business has received. Sure. Now, none of that is covered in certification training. Okay. Okay. So the question is, sometimes certification training is very valuable. For engineering careers, certification training is amazing because mm -hmm. engineers can figure, they build. For we yeah. architects, it's completely irrelevant. So what do I do? I focus on getting people their first jobs. And how do I do it and why is it so different? For architects, I focus on teaching architecture, mm -hmm. system design, ROI modeling, emotional intelligence, leadership skills, presentation skills, because our world is limited by our communication. If I ask a business to tell me about their business and they can't give me the right information, I don't have the right inputs, which means my design is bad. Yeah. So I do that. And I also help people get hired by doing different things. So everybody else in the industry is focused on tech, 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 tech. Amazing. Tech is good. So uh, how can people find you? Uh, what are the programs that you're offering and the free stuff that you're giving away? Sure, so let's talk about all three. Mm -hmm. On our YouTube channel, we have a completely free AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate course. Mm -hmm. And we also have a completely free AWS Advanced Networking course. 
Next month, we're doing a free Cisco Certified Network Associate course. Mm -hmm. And we have a free AWS Solution Architect Associate book, the link um, that users can download. And next week, my team has, has created a AWS Certified Solution Architect Professional book. It's fully written. It's with the editors that we expect to get it on the 18th. So mm -hmm. sometime in the next month or so, we will be releasing that completely free. We can give everybody a link. They can pre-register and it'll be emailed the second it's done. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Look forward to it. We, we look, look forward, forward to, to it. it. Mm -hmm. And also we want to do a masterclass with you with right. our group. Love to. Mm -hmm. uh, we Love have to. some great Let's fun. Let's do some mind mails about what the prospects yes. look like. And sure. looking forward to that with you. And really, really, really appreciate uh, your coming to sit with us and share with us your vision and understanding of scope when it comes to networking and IT. We're, this is the world we live in now. Either True. we're gonna adapt and get stronger in its capacity for cultivation and development, or we're gonna get shot down in, in a terrible way. So, so yeah. we thank you for giving us, sharing with us an understanding and perspective directions. So we're looking forward to getting back with you, Michael. And, uh, and, and, and thank you. Thank you so and much. And for those of you watching, we'll make sure that these links are available mm -hmm. so you can get trained easily right. for free right. and get access to his free resources right. as well. Right. So thank you, Michael Gibbs, and thank you for watching. Right and side. please subscribe to brightsidegloballtrade.org. Right. And yes, we will be doing a lot next year as well. So if you oh, happen wow. to watch this Happy Holiday series, uh, we are moving into 2022. As you know, we never sleep. We work all the time. <laughs> I know the <laughs> feeling. Okay. Hard working group uh, you okay. could ever see. Okay. Uh, so uh, thank you for watching. Um,